the target audience is everybody, literally. And I think that's my favorite challenge of making a film like this. You know, some people say it's a movie for kids. It's definitely kids should come, but it, we call it a movie for humans. It's a movie for everyone, literally all over the world, whether you're three or you're 93, everyone can enjoy this film. It's true, I mean, the level of artistry that goes into a film like this, you know, it takes three years to produce the movie and the artists and the, how, the variety of artists we have and the fact that we have an opportunity to kind of refine the film over and over, it's what makes it such a great piece of art unto itself. This was why I think it's for everyone in the world. Yeah, I think that's what makes animation so special. I think because you can have this fantastic world uh, that you go to, in our movie specifically, we can have, it's about music, and we can have the music represent and, uh, the different diverse cultures all over the world, and it's also important to do through animation because young people come to the movie. So the earlier we can impress upon them this message of the importance of all these different voices, and if you feel different, that you have a space in the world, I think the greater the chance of humanity that we can all ha carry this opinion. It's a movie about diversity. It's uh, all of all types, and yet, uh, it's not about that at all. Like they just get to be, they just get to be side by side. And the antagonist in the film, who's not a villain, there's no villains in this movie, which was important to us. She's creating conflict. She's just passionate about her music, right? So she thinks the world would be a better place if everyone just listened to her kind of music, not this other kind of junkie music, using the term junkie. That's her opinion. What she <laughs> learns is that, that all voices, all music has value. And I think that's a great thing for the antagonist to learn. So hopefully we've done it in a tasteful and fun way, you know, that the message is underneath there. You try to do as much storytelling visually as you can. Yeah. You know, but the dialogue needs to be witty and biting and it adds for economy of clarity mm -hmm. sometimes. So you find a balance. But there's definitely powerful moments, I think, when the, the movie shuts down all, like you were talking about earlier, all the color, all the sound. We were working with the sound engineers and pulling out as much sound as we can. Working with the art department and the lighters, pulling out all the color we can. So it's almost this absence. Like, that's one of the most powerful moments in the movie, this absence of sound, this absence of color. Mm -hmm. Um, but you're right, you know, I feel like everything is music. Everything is driven by music, the way we talk, the, the melody in our very conversation. You know, it's all music to me. It's about enthusiasm, number one. You know, you gotta go into the rooms every day, every, in every department, and be excited about the thing. And from day one to the, the last day on the third year, it's like coming in with that enthusiasm, I think that spreads to the crew. You know, and the cohesion comes from everyone believing in a thing. And once, like I said, once you start empowering the crew and using their ideas and they, they feel like they're listened to, they'll give back tenfold. You know, they'll, they, if they're invested in the, the film itself, the work is uh, beyond, you know? So I think that's the key, you know, being open to, and being collaborative and retaining my enthusiasm, no matter how many cups of coffee it takes. I've been making movies at DreamWorks for 20 years and it can be hard. You start to lose your, you start to lose your way a little yeah. bit. But I'll tell you something with this movie, which was super special, and Dave and I kept looking at each other. We never, and the entire crew, we never got bored. We never got tired of the songs. We still laughed on the last day of the mix on some of our favorite jokes, like Mr. Dinkle's moment. It was still funny to us. So there was something special in the DNA of this movie. And again, I think it was just the excitement of the collaboration and the trust that the studio had that we could make something this weird, but still this accessible. <laughs> like the movie we always agreed had to be about something and to work on something for three years, besides being funny and fun and all those important things, is that it had to be about something. So this message of tolerance has always been applicable to the world and it always will be you know and it's a beautiful message but again how do you how do you make a film with a message and not feel like you're preaching this idea and that was important to us i'm a huge mm -hmm. animation fan so i watch everything yeah. all you know i sleep very little 
<laughs> coffee. I'm co- lots of coffee. I'm constantly consuming things. You know, not just content, but life itself. I think you know, a drive to work or a walk in the morning outside, you'll find the strangest things in the world just by opening your eyes up in every day. I think that's where the weirdest ideas come from. There's a lot that in making an animated movie that ends up on the cutting room floor before you move forward with all the other departments because we're storyboarding it. You know, I still work with paper and pencil and we'll come up with ideas and we'll do the voices ourselves and watch it and go, okay, that didn't work. You know, we'll put it all together. So there's a lot that ends up on the cutting room floor. But for this particular film, I think cause at the foundation, the concept of the movie was so strong mm-hmm. that it really, it survived uh, without having a lot of changes. You know, I think one of the challenges, because we wanted to put so much in the movie, so you will go back a second time, <laughs> is uh, some of the worlds, like classical, got a little shortchanged. You know, I think that was a feeling... Fine like, with me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was a beautiful world. You know, I could have sat in a whole movie just in the classical world, but we wanted to have as much representation as possible. So in the end, we didn't get to spend as much time with those worlds. But that, I think that was probably the, the biggest struggle. The most important one, and this is what I look at when I read scripts, and mm-hmm. look at, is the characters in the center of the thing. You know, are these characters that you want to be? You know, are they, do they have these altruistic goals? Are mm-hmm. they funny? Are they quirky? Are they relatable? It's the characters running through the center of the, the spine of the narrative, I think is the most important thing. And for me personally, does the movie transport you to a place you've never been before? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think those are, those are the two important ingredients to me. Here's the thing about DreamWorks, why I like working there, is mm-hmm. that we don't have a house style. I see. It's, you know, and that's why I love the diversity of the projects themselves. Whatever the story calls for, whatever the filmmaker wants to do, that, that's why we can have movies as different from Trolls as from Dragons. Mm-hmm. Tonally, visually, all of it. And I think that's how we're moving forward in a studio is... And, and in finding our voice is by pushing the looks of these things, the way we push trolls. I know my friends are working on films there now that are creating things that you've never seen before. Mm-hmm. Again, that DreamWorks has never done and we've never seen, you know, that combine elements of 2D and, you know, we really try to do kind of a puppet kind of stop motion thing with ours as well. And just kind of fusing all of this history of animation into a new look. I have always had to work within my own limitations in my personal life and my tools, my, my skills, you know? So that's why I always felt like I'll just push past that. I'll push past those limitations and make it about the ideas themselves. You know, again, I like, I like restrictions. I think it makes you come up with more unique solutions. You know, that's what I've always liked. Sometimes there'll be a situation where, oh my gosh, we've, this is years ago. It was a big, big movie. It was an example of, okay, well, you cannot have another giant shot of these bats, you know, like thousands of bats flying. And it's like, what? We can't do that. That shows the scale of the thing. Instead, we're going to show the character that's the protagonist reacting to those, never seeing those things. All of a sudden, it's much more powerful, you know, because you're empathetic with the guy. So that's an example of like having the restrictions. Of course, if there was no budgetary limitations, uh, you know, we maybe could have even more music. <laughs> music is is very expensive to license. Very expensive. Thank you very much Thank for your you. time. Thank you, guys. Please do another one. Yeah, I'd like to. Thank you.